Absolutely. So to keep it, because I like to play around a lot. But I remember when we went, uh, when I came in to do the audition, from my perspective, um, I had never done uh, any animation, and I had never, uh, I didn't know a lot about the Batman show. But I wanted to do one of the character voices, because, you know, actors always want to do things that stretch them. Mm -hmm. I wanted to do Bollock. Or, oh, look, I don't know look. if you remember that. No, I even no. I requested. No. I said, no. I would, wouldn't you like me to do, you know, the cops or, uh, you know, something? And he said, no, no, no try that. Because I wanted to do, you know, the, the character actors, the D's and the Dems. Right. You did a few <laughs> back then. Yeah. Oh, had, I've as, done some right. as well, once the show got done. started. Yeah. Right. No, I didn't realize what you were offering me. Right. I mean, you were offering me <laughs> every <laughs> episode for 18 years. <laughs> I didn't get that. It turns out you were actually the first person to speak in an episode of Batman, but you weren't playing Batman. You were playing a, uh, a blimp pilot over oh, Gotham City. Oh, I remember that. I yeah. love that you remember yeah. that. Yeah. The man bat flies by and you go, did you see that? Did you there see was that? a ghost. It just blipped across my screen. Yeah. <laughs> the first line I didn't the know that was Batman the first line. You, you, wrote the very, you spoke the very first line in uh, the Batman. I love that. That's wow. a great bit wow. of trivia. That's a good bit of trivia. Yeah. Does that mean that I own like that piece of the show? Uh, yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. <laughs> I remember because we had to sort of train you in, in voiceover a bit about uh, some of the technique. And uh, of course, in any kind of acting yeah. show, there's lots of fight walla mm -hmm. and oofs and ofs. I know where you're going with this. And so, <laughs> and so. I wasn't a natural? Well, it's just, it, you didn't know anything about, you know, what, what, what do I have to do to make I'm this out? I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Uh, uh, and so, uh, you know, at the beginning of every session, you get a, what's called the level. So you stand in front of the microphone and do some of the quiet lines and some of the louder lines and some of the <coughs> uh, uh, impacts. And after, you know, a few episodes, I, you know, I truly fall in love with you and your voice and your talent and everything. And so, uh, as he would give his level every uh, uh, time, I'd say, okay, give me a quiet line, Oops. give me a louder line, uh, give me a couple of impacts, give me a couple of strains. And almost every episode, you were rendered unconscious. You were knocked, yeah. you know, uh, in the head really hard. You have to hard, do a keep alive groan. Okay, a faint and a keep alive groan. So the uh. sound would be like, uh, uh, and then do that last sound. Uh. And after about three or four times of doing that, I said, okay, and then do that sound again. Uh, and then say, Andrea. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a tradition. So, that got to be a real tradition. Absolutely. And, then the first and thing guests was, would come in and they'd like get, not get to go, is this kind of kinky in there? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then it got even sillier when some of the regular actors would do it as well. Uh, Mari Devon, who played Summer Gleason, right. she would go, I'd say, did Mari give me your level? And she'd go, uh, this is Summer Gleason. Andrea. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we still do that one. We do. That's we still do. a tradition. Yeah. That and Hunter. <laughs> well, when I first started doing the sound, I mean, I just used my imagination to come up with that sound that first day we did the audition. Mm -hmm. And I just went to a very dark, husky place, and I was just sitting, literally sitting on my vocal cords. Mm -hmm. And I remember that first season, after a few weeks, a few, or maybe a couple of months, my throat was really getting weak. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it was starting to sound really strained. And I thought, I may not be able to keep this up through a whole season. I didn't realize it was going to be uh, so yes. many seasons. <laughs> <laughs> and I had to go back to, I mean, I, you know, I trained at Juilliard. I did a lot of theater. I did a lot of vocal training over the years. And I came up with a way to support the sound, making the same sound, but not just crunching down to on my throat. vocal cords. Because yeah, yeah. mm -hmm. yeah. that was really, it was all cheating at the yeah. beginning, mm -hmm. right. just right. to get the sound. Right. Absolutely. So I have a question the fans wanted to know the answer to, which is, did you ever dress up as Batman for Halloween? <laughs> <laughs> did you? I actually, there is one funny story. Yeah. Did I ever tell you the story? I don't know. I don't know if the story is. I used to, um, I used to do a lot of uh, um, uh, work with foster kids on, on the weekends. Remember that mm -hmm. group? Mm -hmm. And um, and they found out at one point that. I was the voice of Batman, and of course my stock went through the roof <laughs> at this children's facility. Mm -hmm. And they always did a big Halloween thing. So this one year they said, "Please, please, please, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta wear the cape. You gotta, you gotta wear the the Batman, you know, outfit." And I, and I, and I didn't know how to tell them that I'm the voice. You know, I don't <laughs> have a costume. I, I'm, I don't really wear this thing. I'm the voice. <laughs> they, they they weren't making the the distinction. Mm -hmm. We're young kids. So I went to a, uh, a costume shop in Hollywood, and I bought a I bought a Batman <laughs> costume. Awesome. So I thought, well, I got to go to the Hollywood, the the, uh, the Halloween party, and and you know you can't show up in a station wagon and then go <laughs> run off to the men's room and put mm -hmm. on the, the outfit. So where'd you so find I had, mobile? I had to ra arrive in in the outfit. So this is early in the morning. I'm driving out to um, 
player of this out near Palm Springs, so it's a couple hours drive. I've got the Batman outfit on <laughs> and the cape and the cowl, the and car? I'm driving in my Volvo <laughs> station wagon on the 10 freeway, and all these trucks are going by me, giving me the <laughs> Oreo. <laughs> hey, Batman! <laughs> awesome. That's so cool. I bet the kids loved it. They screamed when I drove up. Oh, they screamed. So that's the only time I ever wore the outfit. That's, okay. that's cool. Now, you have to tell us, because there's got to have been instances where you've been recognized as the voice of Batman in well, there was, you know, you always assume it's, you're so um, incognito. Incognito. You think it's such an anonymous job mm -hmm. that it's always so shocking when someone knows. Your voice who is pretty you, distinctive, even though I can tell your personality is different than Batman. Obviously, but, but I your had voice someone who got it from my name. All right, you gotta tell us. No, 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 no. This, that was another story. There was the one from my voice. I was, I was bringing mail to a post office in Hollywood. I was walking across the parking lot from my car, so all I had was the mail in my hand. I'm going to the parking, uh, the, the mailbox, and there was a homeless guy sitting on the curb. And he goes, hey, buddy, you got a dime? And I said, I, I honestly, I'm sorry, I have no money. I'm, I, I don't even have my wallet on me. And he goes, you're Kevin Conroy. <laughs> uh, and this fan. is a guy sitting in a parking lot, homeless guy, looking for change, and I said, I thought, do I know him? Is this, uh, <laughs> really? is this an, uh, is an unemployed actor? Yeah. <laughs> I said, yeah, very carefully. He said, you're Batman. I said, how did you know that? He said, everybody knows who's Batman. <laughs> <laughs> At least I said, no, really, how do you know? How do you know? He said, well, there's a, a circuit city down the street, and they have all the TVs in the window, and I watch. They have it on your show every day, and I watch your show from the sidewalk. Right. I love it. He so said, please, just do the voice, do the voice. I said, oh, the He said, come on, say it. I am vengeance. <laughs> and I thought, oh, my God, this guy knows the lines. <laughs> so I'm standing there in the parking lot with my mail in my hand, and I get, I am vengeance. And he goes, oh, my God, this is unbelievable. <laughs> say it, say it. I said, I am the knight. I am. So the two of us are saying it together in this parking lot. He's going, I am Batman. You made his week. Oh, it was so funny. That, <laughs> that's a very it's a cool story. story. I love it that. Did you read comics when you were a kid? Did you read the comics oh, when you were a kid? Oh, you know, it's, I, I, I had a very strict childhood. Catholic schools, nuns, you know, we weren't, we didn't do comic books. Yeah. So yeah. had Bruce Wayne's parents lived, you might, it might have been a childhood, something like that. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Pretty, pretty, pretty restrictive. Mm -hmm. Pretty restrictive. Mm -hmm. You know, though, the truth, the truth of it is, we had such remarkable research that had already been done that we could call upon and say, Bruce, where did this story come from, and what yeah. is the bait? Yeah, the between Bruce this? and Paul and Mark Hamill. Yeah, yeah. I know. Yeah. I mean, Mark, it's Mark like having a, li a library. Yeah. Yeah. And Paul Dini. And yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, you guys are amazing. You know everything about this truly, character. Truly. And I knew, I knew very little. I know a lot, and we both do know a lot more now than we yeah. did 20 years ago when mm -hmm. we began. But there's still information that comes to me that I'm like, who was Red Hood? Yeah. I'm sorry, what was well, that character? I always get embarrassed like, when I go to the Comic Cons or something. Right. And a lot of the fans come up. They know so much more they about do. how yeah. history of it. Do you feel like you have those Shatner moments where oh, they, they say, come do you, do you, you know, in, in episode 33, when they change the color from this to this, do you know that? I think, boy, I, I respect that knowledge so much Absolutely. more. I, I don't have any idea what. what yeah, yeah. That. But you know, it's more our job to make it accessible to not only those fans who were really right. into it, but to also to people who weren't comic book readers. Yeah. So that. Your average Joe could turn on a Batman episode and still it be accessible and interesting and entertaining for them as well. Uh -huh. And I always kind of looked at my job as, as being part of that, as being someone who's not that versed in right. the comic books. And so what, and especially for women, because it's such an action right. show and so male oriented, I wanted to be sure that it was a sexy Batman, mm -hmm. that it was a Batman that appealed to women, that there was something about him that was, you know, unattainable because he was so distant. Even to this day, at every comic book convention I go to, Inevitably, two or three fans are going to come up to me and say, "Your show is what got me into comic books," and it really was. It was like the gateway drug for people getting into comic books. It was like, That's, they yeah. should put that on the box. Yeah, really. <laughs> actually, the gateway drug. For comic books, that'd be what good. a compliment, though. No, it's really, really true. That's and, amazing. You know, and I, because we, we worked on it, we, we kind of take it for granted because you know we, we've been yeah, doing this for in when and out for like 18 for so years. Long, you do take it. But for yeah, me. there's a whole yeah. generation of kids now who think of Batman. The way I grew up thinking about, like, you know, Adam West, but right. our, our Batman right. is the is the Batman for like exactly a whole new right. generation right. of kids. No, I think that's it's why. Like, that's really cool. Yeah. I think that's why when anyone, when anyone approaches the character now, whether it's in a, a live action movie or mm -hmm. there's gonna be a TV show, there is they're they're all living with the shadow that your voice casts, 
over what everyone's understanding of Batman is. Mm -hmm. I think it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's really become this essential element. It's set a standard, I yeah, think. Absolutely. I do. I do. Yeah, absolutely. I have a question. When, when you guys got to the Justice League series, you know, and, that, and then now you're going to be like a hero among other other uh, heroes, did you, did, you, did you alter the approach of the character at all? Did you... Um, well, the show was greatly diminished when they expanded it to include those other characters. <laughs> <laughs> what is he going to say? I could resist. I could resist. <laughs> no, it was fun with everybody. You know what was, was cool about that was he still was kind of a standoffish guy. Well, you, well, know? you made him that way. Right. I mean, well, that's really. Just who he is. Well, right. he exactly. was the outsider. Yes. I yes. mean, that was that was part of the dynamic that we played with throughout the series. But at the same time. It's not going to be possible to keep Batman in the shadows and the loner, you know, the way he is on his own show, you know, which we made a real, you know, effort to do that on his own show. We knew that on Justice League, we're either going to have to write him out of the show or he's going to have to go into space, you know, with the rest of the right. Justice League when they have to go, you know, free the, you know, the planet. And they were all superheroes. Yeah, exactly. He's not. Right. Yeah. He's right. mortal. Yeah, right. so that gave, us a, that gave us something to play off of, too, was that, yeah, he's, you know, Either he's smarter than everybody else, or he's maybe resentful of them because he doesn't have powers or whatever, but he's still even more, or he, a little or, bit more of a loner. Or and he's mistrustful. The, the, the joke of the show is that throughout, it was a, a running joke throughout the series, is that he kept saying, well, I'm not really a member of the Justice League, I'm a part-timer. But of course, he's the one who paid for the Watchtower, he's the one who kind of <laughs> right. formed the Justice League, yeah. so it's kind right. of, you know, that's Batman, he's conflicted. He's well, that's always conflicted. the interesting dynamic of Batman within the Justice League, is the fact that, you know, if he considers part of his job to actually watch over them, you know, well, that's, he does that. He too. doesn't. He doesn't yeah. trust them with that right. much power. Right. That's yeah, true. And we made that part of the yeah. ongoing storyline too. Right. Sure. Yeah. I mean, right. it's always interesting for me as a fan to see how the TV show will sort of bleed into the comics, and the comics will reflect the TV show. Mm -hmm. Particularly now, when there's sort of, you know, con obviously the comics are always ongoing, but now for the last, you know, 17, 18 years, there's been a constant form of Batman and these other characters in one form or another. So it sort of kind of mm -hmm. cross pollinates all the time. Right. It's hard mm -hmm. to tell. Right really where one influence started and <laughs> it's true. Right, right. But the Justice League was a whole different experience. What was interesting about um, Justice League as opposed to the other shows was just the structure of the show and having seven characters to share the focus with. Yeah, it was an ensemble. It was an ensemble. Yeah. And in, in um, The Adventures of Batman, and, and uh, you know, up until then, um, I'd really had the luxury of each episode being a real journey for mm -hmm. the character. And, you know, a whole arc, mm -hmm. basically, in each episode. And uh, I was spoiled. And then suddenly, when you're sharing it with seven characters, it's much more of a challenge for the writers, mm -hmm. I think. But for the actors, too, you only have a few lines each episode right. to establish sure. who you are, what your dynamic is, mm -hmm. what you're after. Um, literally, because you're sharing it with seven other, six other people. Right. So it was a whole different experience. Yeah. Well, also, yeah, as you mentioned that, having to then cast around you, because oh, you yeah. were set. You know, your voice was set. So I had to find the rest of the Justice League uh -huh. that mm -hmm. fit into the world that you had created, because mm -hmm. you had set the standard of the voice. Mm -hmm. And so that made a whole other challenge for me to bring all the actors in. And the cast, they were all terrific. Mm -hmm. But it oh, was yeah. it, it created a different, had it been just going from scratch, with no Batman already set, it would have been a different casting situation. But this was, OK, who's going to fit into this world and still make sense with mm -hmm. what we've already established? Yeah, and I got to tell you, that was uh, amongst all the other challenges of doing that Justice League show, and, uh, and there were many. One of the biggest ones was every week trying to find a way to not have Batman completely dominate the show. And, and seriously, because Batman is just such a cool character and there's so many different things you can do with him. And even though we've done so many episodes where in a solo show and in Batman Beyond and whatever, it's just, you know, he, he's almost everybody's favorite character. So it's very easy to, to make the show very Batman-centric. So it was always a challenge to like, okay, we're really doing a lot of Batman lately. We really need to focus on some of these other characters. Yeah. And uh, so that was... Uh, mm -hmm difficult sometimes. Challenge. Yeah. Well, it's also been interesting, I and mean, we're, you know, we've been doing these DCU animated movies now mm -hmm. for a couple years. Three years? At least. I think even more. Time. I think we've been in production a little well, longer. Well, how old is your son? Three? Three, a little over three. Because well, he was born right in the middle of uh, Doomsday. Doomsday, so, that's right. So, yeah. That's right. Little did I know. <laughs> I know. Um, and uh, and initially it was it was really interesting. You know, initially we did Superman first, and and, uh, and then we did New Frontier, which was set during the Cold War. And at the mm -hmm. time, you know, when we were casting that one in particular, it was a Justice League story, and it was it was very much like okay, so, well, 
you know, if we go to Tim Daly for Superman and Kevin Conroy, it, it, we, you're.